What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning back in here to another episode here on the Speed Bug channel. Today, I got a video for you. Don't mind that one over there. But today, I got a video for you that's about that, that, and that. We are going to be talking about a major difference, and I'm going to try and help you all select between a 2500, a 3500, and a 4500. I don't have my 1500 anymore. I sold that, but uh, there's no need for it. And all my trucks are diesel. Um, and I will first and foremost start off by saying, if you're gonna go anything bigger than a, uh, let's just say 2500, you should just invest and spend the money in the diesel. It'll pay dividends long term. So let's jump and get to the video. Let me tell you a lot of the pros and the cons. Which trucks that I like the best? They all of them have great features. Uh, all of them have features I don't care for. Um, it, even as, as y'all know, people that follow this channel, as much as I'm a GM guy, I'm going to tell you the GM truck is not number one, the Ford truck is not number one, and the Ram truck is not number one. They all have their benefits in certain categories, and I'm going to hopefully help you all make that decision at the end of the video and kind of show you a little bit of the benefits of having all three and not just meaning owning different generations of all of them, actually have and own all three. These are all my personal trucks behind me and I do different things with them. So let's jump and get to it. So let's first and foremost start off by introducing, this is the 18, y'all know I had a previous 19, same year, same shit, whatever. Um, it's an 18 uh, Denali. This is a 2500. I have not lifted it or anything else. I uh, will talk about performance mods, but we're all going to talk about these uh, trucks and stock trim to start. So this is a 18 2500. This is a 20 3500. Both of these are single wheel. And I did get the mega cab because I knew I was had this one to my right, which is the 21 at 450, which only comes in dual rear wheel. And I have that to tow my big race car trailer. Now, y'all have seen my big race car trailer. I have it parked currently over here at, on the side of my uh, shop. It is a 48 foot gooseneck. Not that I can't tow my race car trailer, with my 3500 the 2500 cannot do it it does not have the uh payload capacity or the fifth wheel to do so and i can do it but i lifted this truck knowing that i always wanted a lifted truck so i was going to sacrifice some things such as towing with load capacity and the tr uh and the tires but there was a time that this vehicle was on stock tires and had uh, uh, stock tires and uh, stock suspension so we're going to compare it to all of that the load and the weight of that trailer and how heavy it is once you have water and all the living quarters and everything inside of it it's a little much in my opinion for any truck i don't care if it's ford gm or dodge uh for a single rear wheel the dual rear wheel really makes a big difference in the stability of you going down the expressway when you have four or five thousand pounds of payload on that back axle so let's start off which i'm kind of already leaning towards this the f450 now i'm not gonna lie 450 is awesome it's a great truck of the three it's the most expensive as it can pull and do the most work when i say the most work as a truck however it's also the biggest it does have the best turning radius but because it is so large it does sometimes make it a true pain in the ass to get in and out of places so then you jump down into the 3500 which is a single rear wheel and I do have some negative offset wheels. These are on 37s, but we're going to talk about it when it was stock. Okay. And when it was stock, it's much easier to get in and out of places in parking lots and such as that without the dual rear wheels, even with the better turning radius. Okay. And that is solely because, and what makes a big difference is the bed length. That is an eight foot bed. I think they call it a five and a half or six foot. I can't remember what it's called when you get the, the mega cab. It's roughly about the same size bed as the Denali. Now the 2500 and the 3500 in these configurations, whether you get the little bit longer bed and the uh, uh, little bit longer bed without the mega cab or the mega cab and a little bit shorter bed, they're pretty close to as far as maneuvering around. I will tell you this. There's a huge ride difference between all three trucks. We all know from a durability perspective, the solid axle is more durable than independent front suspension, which the GM truck has. GM truck, awesome. 
rides like it's like a Cadillac, like it's like gliding down the road. It does ride better than all the other two trucks, even when there's weight in them. So keep that in mind, picking your choice. Also, the Denali of the 2500 and the 3500 that are the single rear wheels is still smaller than the, uh, uh, than, the than the Ram truck. So if you're trying to go in tight places and use it as an everyday vehicle, and you're not going to be towing as much and ride superior and the ride quality is most important for you i'm going to tell you right now whether it's 2500 or 3500 probably lean more towards the gmc now let's move away from that okay right interior quality well that one i'm going to say is probably last it's a toss up between the ram and the ford depending on which layout and style you like I think the materials are a little bit nicer in the Ford, but I think the layout is much nicer in the Ram. So it's really a toss up between the two. Maybe you like the new uh, Ford interior. Maybe you like the new uh, 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 Ram interior. It's entirely up to you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, before somebody crucifies me for options and all this and all that, let me tell you, they're all the top model. Denali, Limited. Platinum with all the options. I did not go with the limited on that one solely because I didn't like the inserts on the seat. Now, as far as ease to work on, I maintenance and do all of my own work on all this. I've never taken any of these vehicles back to the dealer. I do all of it. So if ease of work and you're going to do a lot of driving and you want to maintenance everything, I'm going to tell you hands down right there, the Cummins is the hands down easiest one to work on. Second would be the Ford, and third would be the most pain in the ass is by far the Duramax. Keep in mind, this is all emissions equipment and everything intact. I can't call it for what you do when you take all of your emissions equipment off and stuff like that. However, we all know that it's not this generation, it's not that generation. Once you remove that stuff, it's a breeze to work on. But we have to talk with it, you know, coming out of the factory here. As far as power, again, no tunes or anything like that, okay? As far as power, okay? This one does have the six-speed. I have driven many with the 10-speed. The 10-speed Allison does make a big difference, okay? But I will tell you this, as far as power, the Ford and the Power Stroke by far has the most pulling power, okay? Yes, the 450 has the biggest, uh, the, the, the tallest rear end, but even on the 350, and you compare all 350s with, uh, I think, a 390 rear end versus the 450s or whatever that come with, or the 430s, I can't remember. The Ford still has uh, the, the the most pulling power and the, and the broadest power band. The one with the smallest and the most narrowest power band is by far the Ram, but it definitely has the most torque down low. Now, also out of the factory, okay, again, before and after tuning, I can say that, okay, is that the Cummins does get by far the best gas mileage, okay? As far as stopping power, okay, who has the best stopping power? I would have to give it to either the Ram or the Ford. Not that the GM truck doesn't have a great stopping power, but it really sacrifices a little bit of the stopping power, in my opinion, okay, for its ride quality due to its independent front end, okay? And that also goes on the 3500. The reason why I also did not get a 3500 GMC is because I wanted just a little bit softer of a ride. If I did not have the Ram 3500, I would have chose to opt for the 3500. Now you're gonna ask a lot of people, what's the difference between the 2500 and the 3500? Different axles and uh, leaf springs, uh, tighter suspension, uh, it's, diff uh, it's tighter, uh, stronger suspension. Uh, to handle that extra payload if you could spring for it and it is your only truck and you don't have three like me I would highly always recommend get the more truck than you always need that way You're not in need of more of a truck the 3500 will also be your best of bestest friends Now as far as transmission both of these are six speeds and those that one is a 10 speed that one's had the 10 speed for quite some time and now the new GM trucks have the 10 speeds. The 10 speed, it does keep it in the power band much better. However, um, there's not as much aftermarket support yet for the 10 speed. As far as the ASIN versus the 68 RFE, I would hands down tell you to get the ASIN transmission 100% all of the way. It's just the most more, more robust and durable transmission. If you're trying to fly and make a bunch of power, there's a lot more aftermarket support, which there's pretty much virtually none for the ASIN. Um, but you're trying to do two different things with the transmissions. And as far as the Ford transmission, I forget what the number or what the 
what it's exactly called for the, for their 10 speed but there is aftermarket support as well for the 10 speed uh, which transmission out of the box um, either 6 or 10 6 or straight 10 which one do i prefer the most hands down 100 percent i think the ford transmission um, is the best out of the box factory tuned and aftermarket tuned it doesn't hunt for gears it always knows what gear it's in some people have said that they haven't had good luck with it i've had nothing but great luck with it and pulling my race car trailer and everything i've to pull almost thirty thousand pounds with this thing up six and seven percent grades for 15 20 miles in the uh, hills of tennessee and i have no complaints to it whatsoever aftermarket support well let's jump into that but i'm not going to dive too much into that because the sky's the limit and this is a if you do this you could get this and you could get this and spiral out of the control to get this ver versus that and we're not going to go there so as far as the aftermarket support as far as the engine side the cummins obviously is going to have the most aftermarket support um yes it makes the least amount of horsepower do i think it's probably the most durable and robust probably um, but you're going to give a little to get a little. As far as more horsepower and RPM, it's going to be a toss-up between the uh, Ford and the Chevy. Um, what do I think that you're going to really get the most? I, I've turned this thing as far as 3,800 RPM. I've only maybe turned this as far as 35. Uh, but I do believe that the Ford, uh, the Power Stroke, the Scorpion engine versus the L5P, um, I don't want to necessarily say that it has an edge. It just has a different edge. Um, you know, you're talking... I'll let you be the deciding and judge of that. Let's just say the difference is negligible. Pick the one that you like most. Um, they're all perfectly fine. Uh, they use the, pretty much the same about a DEF uh, when, when towing and unloaded. Now, performance and non-DEF and, and all that stuff, I don't think you can go wrong w w with all three. We all know what a, a off-road truck can do, but I can't comment exactly on any of these for being off-road purpose because these are all on-road purpose so um price point uh between the 2500 3500 and the 4500 obviously like, and i told you the 4500 is the most expensive uh but i do believe it is it, like i said it does the most work in the truck as far as these two and if you're going to just say a gmc 3500 or silverado high country 3500 which one would you get again it really depends on exactly what you want to do with it. I don't really necessarily think that one truck is better than the other, but I will tell you that truck rides a lot better, but that truck maybe mechanically may give you a little bit less headache as far as the engine side. I do believe that maybe some of the interior stuff of the GMC is made a little bit better, but I do, but the engine is on the Cummins is mechanically so much easier to work on whether it's cp4 cp3 it it, it it doesn't matter they have so many fixes for for all of that stuff now you again be the side of which one you you want exactly the solid axle it does take some getting used to coming from an independent front end truck so you do have to be wary of that but again you're not buying these trucks to necessarily only also put 75,000 miles on them you're trying to get four or five hundred thousand miles out of these things and that's that's the real goal so which truck ultimately if i only had to keep one well obviously for me it would hands down only be my 450 because i still race and haul my race cars and stuff like that which truck do i drive driving around town the most um i'm not gonna lie it's a toss-up because of what i've done uh to my ram and how i have my denali here still stock the GMC just I'm not gonna lie it just drives a little bit better than the Ram and it has a hell of a lot more power and a broader power band than that straight six but I got to give it to the few things I've had to work on these things mechanically and the few touches that I've put on them under the hood I'll tell you this I'll pick that Cummins any day over that damn Duramax because that Duramax is a pain in the ass to work on and there's just I don't want to say it's just no engine space but let's just say most GM shit is pretty easy to work on well, GM and Azuzu, I don't know, they just wanted to just piss off all the mechanics. And Cummins is, it's, it's like a small black Chevy. You, you, it's, if you can't work on that, you were, you, you, something's wrong with you. As far as the uh, Ford working on that, well, you know, it's, uh, it's not as bad as that. But, you know, make sure you got some swivel sockets. So, 
ultimately uh, i also had another friend that wanted to know say hey which one should i get man i'm in the market for a diesel truck right and i said look i'm not gonna lie if i only had one and if i was gonna pick a 3500 single rear wheel you know for me i like the ford stuff as much as i am a gm guy trust me i am a gm guy i would probably still pick a ford truck because i just like some of the amenities and the luxury features that the ford truck has in a uh, 350 single rear wheel but i told him i said you know what i said go test drive all three i said because they're all so close now and they all pretty much do the exact same thing I said, nah, especially the new ones where you're going to get the 10 speed on, on the GM truck. So it's also coming with the new updated interior. After you really decide and drive all three, because they're all pretty much going to be in the same price point. After you pick the one, you like, don't just pick the one, the GM truck, because I'm a GM guy or I'm a Dodge guy or I'm a, you know, I bleed blue Ford guy. You know, what? go drive the one you want and pick the one that best suits you. And I promise nowadays, especially if you're buying them new with a warranty, you can't go wrong with either one of them. So ultimately that's my goal if you try to drive around town get a 25 or 3500 dually just might be a little bit of a bitch to get you around town but there's a purpose to it you're not buying a dually just to drive around you're buying a dually to haul stuff uh but of the three the ford is still my favorite i love my dodge just as much as i love my gm truck that's why i bought it again that's why i ha have this and obviously i just like to collect american shit but Hopefully this is a little bit informative to you guys. All three trucks are in a completely different category. They all do something completely different. And to me, one is really not better than the other. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope this was informative to you. Peace out, and we'll see you for another episode here on the Speed Bug Channel.